on the uh, report of the Law and Justice Standing Committee, uh, on the 2018-2019 annual report of the Office of the Prime Minister and of the Department of Immigration. You will understand, Rambor Speaker, that uh, after the rearrangements under the coalition government, the Immigration Department is now under the Ministry of uh, Home Affairs. Uh, looking after the Department of Immigration. Uh, in this uh, report that is before the House today has uh, uh, very little comments about the functions of the Department of Immigration. I believe there was an observation with regard to some accounts that um, were not quite clear, but at the end of the report, the report, the committee acknowledged that uh, that has been cleared. And uh, I'm also glad to mention here at this stage that um, the uh, ensuing accounts of the Department of Immigration after that for the last two years have actually been um, unqualified audit reports. So that's a remarkable achievement by the, uh, the Department of Immigration. Honorable Speaker, you will know that the, uh, the Office of the Department of Immigration is responsible for border security looking after uh, uh, Fijians and those, uh, our guests and our friends that come into Fiji and also leave Fiji at the end of their stay. And part of their work um, is to ensure the security of our entry points, particularly at the border, both our, in our airports and also in our seaports. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> The department is quite challenged at the moment in terms of the, the support um, that it has, that is been given over time, to be able to provide this, um, uh, this work for Fiji, which is very, very important. Of course, the first line of defense for Fiji is our immigration department as the people come through Nandi or through Suwa or our support to make sure that they do not come with, uh, you know, with the usual shenanigans that people bring from across the other side of the sea, you know, to bring into Fiji. So it's very important that, uh, that we have a professional department that is well supported in every aspect to be able to keep Fiji secure and safe. Uh, this is something that the, uh, that the uh, department continues to try and do, to be able to, you know, to perform its functions despite the limitations of the resources that it's got. I would just like to, to say that at the moment our Suba office is, uh, uh, is being relocated because that building is now uh, is actually not fit for human habitation. And I believe the Fiji Revenue and Customs Services owns that building. And uh, I'm glad that the building has been identified by the Ministry of Finance that the uh, department is going to move into. Uh, <clears throat> One other issue in particular that, uh, uh, that the department deals with in a big way is the issuance of passport. You will understand that uh, we are now in the digital era and, uh, and uh, uh, we now have the new passports that we have which conforms to international standards of travel. That is, uh, in the report mentioned that there were some glitches at the beginning, but I'm glad that a lot of that has been you know, cured. Uh, since the time this report uh, uh, was written and submitted. But suffice to say, Honorable Speaker, that uh, there's a great demand for passports in Fiji today, and um, it's uh, putting on a lot of strain on our immigration officials to be able you know, to produce for the people of Fiji uh, these passports when they need them. Obviously, the conditions are quite clear for, for the issuance of passport, those that I want their passport almost immediately and those that have to uh, uh, pay just enough so that they can get it over a working week. Uh, one other aspect that, uh, uh, that relates to passport, uh, and I'm sure this is something that uh, I see it's been listed in one of the agenda items for the days to come, but there has been some concerns about passports Fijian passports that have been use, issued to a whole range of people that are now living in Fiji uh, 
terms of whether they are actually qualified you know, to have these uh, passports issued to them and become Fiji citizens. So um, I think when we travel around, we see a whole range of people who now say that they are citizens uh, and have qualified by time. So uh, uh, we are doing some research into that to find out whether, you know, how many of those have actually been issued and whether they have been issued under proper, under the current laws that are in place for people to follow. Uh, one of the concerns at the moment, Honorable Ch uh, Sticker, is that the, uh, the qualification by naturalization. Um, uh, there is some concerns at, that are being aired by uh, our people who are formerly Fijian citizens and also their families who want to, to get a Fijian passport and that is the cost of having to, to, to get a Fijian uh, passport. Uh, now that, um, that other nationalities uh, are allowed to acquire Fijian passports, dual citizenry, uh, under the current laws that we have. So the cost of uh, acquiring um, citizenship by naturalization is concerned by them. I must uh, assure you, Honorable Speaker, and the House and our people that the government is looking at this and hopefully in the future we will have a, a, a report on the deliberations of government with regards to this particular request. On the matter of our work permit process, this has always been a concern. Uh, our private sector is always concerned that immigration is not always, you know, quick enough. Our sense of urgency, uh, words that they say in terms of facilitating, you know, investments in Fiji through acquiring uh, permits uh, under the proper process. But you will understand, Honorable Speaker, that there are uh, the matter of our border and who we allow to come in is a matter of our national concern. And whilst we want to facilitate to get people to come and work in Fiji by way of work permit, we must also be conscious that we also have issues that, that could come with these uh, problems. Um, and I hope also that we are able, we are looking at uh, talking to the private sector for now, looking at better ways on how we can be more efficient in granting work permits, you know, for those that want to come and work here. The last issue perhaps I want to raise, Honorable Speaker, is the issue of uh, one of the things that we look at is the granting of citizenship. You will know, Honorable Speaker, that a few years ago um, the laws were changed from five years to 15 years you know, to qualify to become a Fijian. And um, this has been a cause of many heartache for a lot of people because they do not seem to be able to understand why such, you know, an extension of time when, you know, five years was and then that had to be increased twice to, before they can qualify. So this is a matter that needs to be looked at also fairly, particularly for genuine people that want to become Fijians and be granted citizenry. Uh, and, uh, and they have to be granted the liberty in all fairness. So this is a policy that government wants to look at um, and hopefully um, come out with some positive outcome that's not only good for those that are applying, but also benefit uh, Fijian people, uh, particularly for the, you know, through the services of those that will acquire this citizenship um, uh, other than through the grants of naturalization. So, Honorable Speaker, that is uh, my contribution to that, and I thank the committee and all my colleagues that have uh, spoken on this matter, particularly on the Department of Immigration, and I, and I support the motion that is before the House. Thank you. Thank you. I now give the floor to Honorable Maraj. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, 